This is a simple articulated fly pattern that moves the biggest fish in the pool every time. Whether they're chasing it as prey or out of agitation, the meat fly makes them bite. I'm using two stinger style hooks here, the Gamagatsu BS10. Use any streamer style hook you'd like, with a front hook that's one size larger than the back. Start out with the back hook on the vise. 140 denier Flymaster plus olive thread, start a base, and wrap down to the bend. One select strung marabou feather will be tied in for the tail. Stroke all the fibers towards the tip to bunch them up. And then get the feathers a bit wet to tame them before bringing to the hook for measurement. Keep this back tail short, about the shank of the hook or less. Capture the marabou with a few wraps and adjust the tail for length if necessary before bringing your thread forward to lock it into place. With your free hand, pull the tag end of marabou down and forward while you wrap your thread up to the eye. This will make sure it doesn't spin around and bunch up in one place, and it adds some body to the midsection of the fly. Once you get to the front of the hook, you can trim off the excess marabou and take your thread back to the original tie-in point. There we're going to tie in one hackle feather from a Grizzly Bugger Mini Pack. Opposite of what we did with the marabou feather we just tied in, we need to preen these fibers back from the tip, splaying them out, creating a small tie-in point at the tip of the feather. Use a little saliva on your finger if you need help getting the hackle fibers to lay back on the stem. Then hold the tip of this feather on the near side of the hook and tie it into place. Peacock Firestar dubbing will make the body which needs to be fairly robust for this meaty fly. The final step will be to brush out some of this dubbing through the hackle fibers, so we want to make sure there's plenty to go around. Set your dubbing out in small clumps so that you can quickly dub noodle after noodle without picking up and setting down the pack of Firestar. Then with superhuman speed, spin tight pearlescent noodles of dubbing and wrap them up the hook shank. Make sure your wraps are consecutive. And don't be afraid to add more dubbing if it needs it. Usually when you're using dubbing, you want to keep it sparse and add more if you need it. With this fly, you can add as much as you'd like right away. Once you make the final turds of dubbing behind the eye, grab your grizzly hackle and begin to make spiral wraps forward, stroking the feather fibers back with each consecutive revolution towards the eye. When you get to the front, capture the hackle with two or three wraps behind and in front before pulling the tag end from the hook and adding a whip finish and then trimming your thread. With your favorite dubbing brush tool, stroke the Firestar dubbing rearward to tease some of those iridescent Firestar fibers through the grizzly hackle and help lay down those hackle fibers. Next you'll need a connector piece. Now I'm using 20 pound braided super line but tieable bite wire works well too. Trim about a 12 inch piece from the spool and double it over to align the tips. Pinch the loop end between your index finger and your thumb to twist that loop to a point, like you're creating a noodle of dubbing. Once you get it to that point, go ahead and push it through the eye and open up the loop again. Then you can either push the end pieces of the braided line through the loop and pull them tight, or pull the loop around the fly and pull it tight to create a secure connection with the back hook. I like a little something to cover up that midsection of super line, so I use glass beads. Not only will it cover any exposed line that we have after attaching to the front hook, but it'll be a nice little attractor in the midsection of that fly. Use any color you like, but red and white are my favorites. Set this section aside for safekeeping while you add a cone head bead to your front hook and secure it into the jaws of your vise. Much of this fly is going to be just like the first, starting with a base of thread going back to the bend of the hook. This is where we're going to attach our trailer material. Add a few wraps to loosely secure the super line to the top of your hook before pulling the tag end of the line to dial in the length of the trailing section. I like to have the beads nearly touching the back end of the hook with a slight gap in between. Once you've got the line where you like it, go ahead and add tight securing wraps rearward a bit down the bend of the hook before wrapping forward again to cover the tag end of the super line all the way up to behind the cone head bead. Add a line of super glue to the length of the hook shank before folding the tag end of super line back over itself and capturing that down with tight thread wraps. Get a solid foundation of thread built over this section to ensure the biggest trout in your home pools 
would not pull it loose. Never had it happen, but I can imagine the feeling of dread. Don't let it happen to you. Then we can move on to the tail section of our lead fly. Instead of one marabou feather, I'm going to tie in two. One for the top and one for the bottom. Moisten the feathers to tame the unruly fibers and then bring them to your hook for measurement. I'm going to have this tail extend past the eye of the trailing hook, covering up the middle section of our super line and the head portion of our back hook. Capture this with two or three thread wraps and adjust the length if you need to. Then I'm going to add another portion of tail on the underside of the main hook. Split the fibers to form a V shape. Tuck it in on the bottom side of the fly and add a few securing wraps. Just like before, I'm going to maneuver the extra marabou forward while I tie down all the way up to behind the conehead bead. Trim off the excess feather when you get to the front and bring your thread back to the original tie-in point to tie in another hackle feather. We'll just tie in the tip of this hackle feather and have those feathers preened out and ready to wrap forward. Before that, we'll start noodles of more Firestar dubbing to create the meaty goodness of a body all the way up to the head of the fly. Again, I like to take it in sections. Set out your dubbing ahead of time just to make the process go a little bit quicker. Then you can spiral wrap that hackle one more time, stroking the hackle fibers towards the back with each forward wrap. Capture that hackle down when you get to the front and trim away the excess stem. Now the longer the feather you have tied in, the closer the wraps you can make all the way up to behind the eye of the hook. If you have a relatively short feather, your spiral wraps need to be further apart just to make sure the feather goes all the way up to behind the bead. Add one more strong noodle of dubbing around the neck to clean up that area and then whip finish or half hitch. I like to add a small amount of super glue to the thread and make a few wraps just to finish off the fly as well. Trim your thread and go through the front section of your fly with your dubbing brush tool to tease out more flashy material. When I watch people throw nymphs in the spring and fall, I just want to yell out, throw them the meat! It's for those fish that don't want to be fed, they just want to hunt or protect their territory. And it works. You don't have to go to the supermarket for this meat, but larva lace is like the supermarket for fly tying supplies with a shop in Mitchell, South Dakota. They ship materials all over the world, so email Lori or go to HagensFish.com to get set up with the best fly tying materials on the market. Share your tying and fly fishing successes on the Fly Tying University Facebook page. It's a growing community for all fly tires. Larva Lace is a supporter of the Fish Stories Archive, where you can preserve voices of anglers you care about. Thanks for tying with Larva Lace. Tight lines. <laughs>